Hi guys, let's talk about the science of emotions today. Not only at the physical level, well, your brain elicits uh, neurotransmitters and hormones, but also at the non-physical level, and that's where your brain and all your also your cells uh, emanate uh, frequencies at various level. Essentially, think of your brain as a drugstore. It's a very badass drugstore. It has um, uh, access to all kinds of really powerful drugstores that then dictates what the rest of your cells do, but also it does it at a frequency level. So it's both at the non-physical and also at the physical level. And so you can think about it that the power and the force that they bring uh, is not only internal, but also external. So it could be an extremely, extremely powerful uh, force that you have at your disposal. Researchers in the field of psychology have counted um, almost 4,000 different emotions that humans feel, not necessarily on a daily basis, but it, they do exist and they've been actually able to count them and put names on them. We call them continuous emotions. There are also discrete type of emotions and they're categorized to only six type of very basic emotions. We've also proved over and over in science that um, we are emotional decision makers even the decisions that we believe to be very logical most of the time they're not and that has nothing to do with your gender with your race whatever it is as a human being we are extremely emotional and that is part of what makes our character and so most of the decisions that we make are actually emotional knowing that we are emotional beings and we make all these supposedly logical decisions based on um, emotions. Obviously in science, it becomes extremely interesting to study emotions. I dedicated big part of, big chunk of my thesis to that when I was doing research that was information science related because I wanted to see when people feel emotional, how do they go about searching and processing the information that they were looking for. And we see that very, very clear today. We see it every day, but in this day and age, we just see it how emotional everybody is. There's nothing wrong with that, but it is so important in our lives that it's important to actually pay attention to it and study it a little bit and try to at least understand it at a basic level. And that's what we're trying to do today. We're trying to understand it. A lot of people today uh, feel that the whole, their whole world is changing, including me, that it becomes a very emotional process for us to figure out. So we try to understand uh, what is going on. We try to understand who we are and where, we he where we're headed. And we take a lot of stance and there is nothing wrong with that. I'm not taking any stance there, but I do want to emphasize that we need to understand it because at the end of the day, um, sometimes we do make decisions that um, might be too emotional for the moment, which we then might regret or at least think um, twice about uh, in the future. And so that's why my whole intention is with this video to help sort of shed light on that part. Let's go back to um, thinking about your, um, your brain as a drugstore. Essentially, it, it is a drugstore. Um, the whole um, pharmaceutical uh, industry is built up on that. Uh, the way they create medicine is actually mimicking or, or um, opposing um, the neurotransmitters that you already have in your brain. And so that is becomes it's it's a little bit it's a, it becomes a manipulation of um, basically how your brain works. Um, I don't like medicine, that's why. But but that's another that's another story. But the point I'm trying to make is that your brain is already extremely powerful, and you can control the way in which you get the dosages of drugs because these drugs that it produces also impacts your behavior. 
The way in which these drugs or neurotransmitter and hormones uh, impact you is not only through the decisions that you make, but also it is uh, impacting your, your cells uh, as well as the frequency of your cells. As a result, you will um, make a decision uh, do an action, do something, and then that has a ramification maybe, and then you take another action because you're even more emotional, and so it kind of feeds off of itself. If you've noticed the days or the moments that you're very emotional, uh, your body becomes extremely tired. It also craves certain things if you've paid attention. One of the things that your body most um, most likely will crave is sugar uh, or the cocaine of food. Sugar is the white cocaine of food. And that is because your brain feed off of glucose, which is this, you know, sweetener in or the 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 sweet aspect of um of food and because we are so accustomed to sugar since we were born as a result your brain signals and say hey i need more uh, power because i have to work so hard and there are a lot of it's very emotional so give me something sweet give me glucose and you translate it into sugar and if you've ever studied um, anything about sugar, you know of its um, negative impact on the body, on the cells, um, and also the type of environment that it creates within your body that um, invites even more um, diseases and it kind of makes you weak from within. Now, I'm not trying to say that we shouldn't get emotional. It is part of the part of life. We need to speak up. We we get angry. We get emotional. I get that. I was so angry the other day, and I made a decision, and I'm kind of regretting it today. So it is part of part of life. I understand, but at the same time, it's also very important to understand it and elevating ourselves enough such that once we have experienced the emotion, we get back and we try to understand it. That was at the physical level. Another way in which emotions impact your body um, as well as your cells a lot is through the frequencies that it um, creates. Every time you get emotional, especially anger or frustration, like I was feeling the other, the other day, um, those frequencies are extremely high. Uh, they go up, the, uh, up from mid beta to um, very, very high beta and also up to gamma waves. And there is nothing wrong with that, but it becomes an issue where it, it, it starts firing up throughout your whole brain. That is when this um, experience of things being chaotic, um, not being able to see clearly what's going on, um, all those things happen. So you can imagine a cloud of storm around your head that then moves throughout your body um, impacts every single cell in your body, uh, interrupts the way in which your cells were harmoniously working prior to that, and then that creates a chain reaction. Again, nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and get angry, or go ahead and cry, go ahead and get frustrated, go ahead and swear. I do that too. But um, get don't 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 sit with it for too long because the more you sit with those emotions the more dangerous it becomes because it creates a momentum that will then ha will have a more long-term effect on your the frequencies that your brain also um, creates or produces, um, there are specific parts of the brain in which it is more um, 
detect detectable than others. Uh, prefrontal lobe, which is right right in front of your head, uh, are the ones that get affected a lot. Uh, and the prefrontal lobe, but both at a physical and non-physical level, is the most important part that helps you make decisions, uh, very logical decisions. And the brain doesn't, or the prefrontal lobe doesn't um, mature all the way um, uh, until um, we're around 25 years of age. And so for that reason, you will notice more um, r um, drastic behavior for people around that. If you have watched these all these videos that are going viral most of them if you notice there is a pattern to them there are most of them um, people be below 25 years old who are extremely emotional and they're expressing themselves and gosh again i do that too but i'm just saying i'm just looking at it from the from the neurological point of view and um, and then you notice also a lot of decisions that are being made are you sit there and laugh at it, but if you were in that situation, you would probably make the same <laughs> because think about it. When you're in a situation, you're, it's not an isolated situation. You're there. Everybody else is there. Everybody else's energy is there. And then you're, you're at that age where prefrontal lobe is not fully developed. So it becomes like an explosion. Not everybody behaves like that. This was just an example, but it's very important to be aware of the shift that is going on. I mean, everybody, the whole world is going through this huge shift. Uh, months and months of lockdown, our financial situations have changed, our friends have changed, everything. So everybody's trying to understand their situation and their position in this world and as a result we become very emotional but understanding it and elevating your own um, elevating your own consciousness around it helps you to get back to a more balanced state once you've gone out and express yourself or been on Twitter and expressing yourself or, or talking to your friends. Because if we don't do that, these emotions, once they sit there for a long time, it becomes like an habitual behavior or habitual frequency that you will carry with you that in a period of time will actually contribute to um, diseases, um, stress obviously, and everything else. And so the fact that we are trying to understand even these emotions and trying to get to a more balanced level is very important. So you can use this powerful drugstore of yours that is up here um, to your benefit or um, against you. If you use it to your benefit, you can actually uh, manipulate your own brain to elicit, to create, to produce the neurotransmitters and, the, hormo uh, and the hormones along with the frequencies that are actually very good for you because emotions are like double-edged sword. They can be extremely destructive, but they can also be extremely constructive. And the neurotransmitters and hormones that you like to have, for example, is serotonin, um, dopamine in uh, moderation, uh, etc. And you can read about those, of course. But uh, you are in control. Um, I think it's very important that we understand that we are in control. Last time we talked about the questions that some of you had around brainwashing and the fact that we are in control also came up. My point with all these videos is to shed light on the fact that you are the one who's in control at the end of the day. You can manipulate your own brain to be your best friend, but you can also manipulate it to be your enemy. 
it's really really up to you expressing ourselves standing up to tyranny i'm all for that if you've read my tweets i say that too and i speak up when there's something that is not right i speak up and i speak my mind but the problem is if i let it sit in me for too long because i know that then that would create diseases that will i also highly encourage you to read about alpha waves uh, beta waves and gamma waves if you're interested if not i can do videos on those too but it's extremely interesting because the language of your body is the language of frequencies that's just the whole thing um, that's why i love tesla so much i cannot get enough of that guy um, because um, the way he talks about it is just makes you fall in love it made me fall in love with with uh, the science of frequencies and so you can definitely use that once you gain that knowledge to um, make yourself a much happier and much co more constructive person and that is when you can also still speak up and um, take stands but in a good way my heart goes out to everybody who's out there and uh, expressing themselves in any form or shape um, those for those of you who know me I'm not a violent person but that doesn't mean that I let people walk all over me if somebody says something that is not right I do take a stand and I do express myself with my words I don't um, throw stuff at them um, so I, I keep it at that level that I'm comfortable with but everybody has a different way of communicating so there is no judgment there um, but what I'm trying to say is that I don't, I don't let people walk over me and I, I'm not talking about us being all peaceful and stuff when there is tyranny, when the government is doing what they're doing and, and everything else. So I wanna make that clear. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Thank you to those of you who sent me questions. I try to keep these videos more geared towards the questions that you ask and I appreciate those of you who also um, um, post on my Twitter and also uh, thank me. I really, really appreciate everybody's comments. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye.